SCPs will come and go, we know that. But the most important thing in life will always be the anomalies at this containment site. Right here, right now. That's family. Thank you, Dr. Toretto, for that inspiring speech. Family can mean many things to many people. And when it comes to the bizarre world of SCPs, family can be found in some very unexpected places. Take the two brothers, Cain and Abel, SCP-073 and SCP-076-2 respectively, as an example. Their shared history goes back centuries, and from what little we've been able to learn directly from the source, the two seem to have the mother of all sibling rivalries. Abel can become visibly enraged at the very mention of Cain's name, whereas Cain has a more subdued response calmly but firmly urging inquisitive researchers not to discuss the matter any further. Whatever bad blood came between them is not fully known, but it likely has something to do with the nature of their anomalous abilities. Cain has the power to drain the lives of plant life with merely a touch, while Abel has the power of resurrection, returning from the grave every time he was dealt a lethal blow. The two were natural opposites, and yet they were also undeniably family. And their case is not wholly unique within the SCP Foundation, as there is also another pair of completely antithetical beings in containment who surprisingly share a family tree. And much like the dynamic between SCP-073 and SCP-076-2, there was one side of the pair that could express nothing but distress at the mere mention of the other. And it was, by far, not the one that most would expect. Enter SCP-682 one of the most deadly Keter-class SCPs that the Foundation had ever known, a reptilian monstrosity responsible for multiple containment breaches, capable of withstanding the total punishment of weapons both conventional and anomalous, and hell-bent on following through on the personal violent destruction of every living being in existence. It is an anomalous creature so overwhelmingly powerful and indestructible that one could easily assume that it was incapable of fear. And in most cases, that would be an astute observation. But not when it comes to the matter of SCP-999, the Tickle Monster. In stark contrast to SCP-682's viciousness, SCP-999 is a bundle of pure, unadulterated bliss. Resembling a smiley-faced glob of sunshine and honey, SCP-999's main anomalous property is its ability to bring lasting joy to all beings that interact with it. Prolonged contact with the little guy has even been proven to cure depression and ease trauma. What's more, SCP-999 seems to actively seek out others to share these benefits with, and often does so through play or other forms of socialization. SCP-999 is benevolent in just about every way that a being could be, and that makes it very different from most of the sapient anomalies in containment. It is especially different from SCP-682, even though they have a common origin. While the family resemblance is far from striking, these two SCPs are half-siblings, not as closely related as Cain and Abel, but that is still a lot closer than most researchers would expect. Both of them were allegedly born from human mothers who had undergone a horrific ritual at the hands of an obscure cult known as the Children of the Scarlet King. As the ominous name of the cult implies, the members of the Children of the Scarlet King worshipped a nightmarish deity known as the Scarlet King. This interdimensional superbeing has become known to the SCP Foundation as one of the most threatening anomalous forces in existence, and some have even suggested that the Scarlet King is the ultimate threat that the Foundation must overcome if they wish to achieve their goals. To put it a different way, the Scarlet King is like the last boss of a traditional RPG video game, a primal source of all evil and suffering in the world, which must be defeated at any cost. His powers are so great that our world is merely one of many that he aims to conquer and reduce to rubble and ruin. And all of us mortals can take a bit of solace in the fact that the Scarlet King's split interests mean that he is unlikely to invade our world directly anytime soon. He is not without his schemes and contingencies, though, of which the vile machinations of the children of the Scarlet King were surely one. The two ordinary human women who would go on to give birth to both SCP-682 and SCP-999 
were part of a group of seven individuals total, all of whom had been imprisoned by the children of the Scarlet King and were found in the late stages of pregnancy at the cult's compound. Upon being discovered by the SCP Foundation, these women were placed in containment and designated as SCP-231. Over the duration of their containment, the instances of SCP-231 have given birth to various anomalies. Most of these anomalies have been catastrophically dangerous Keterclass anomalies, and have each been the cause of hundreds of casualties. Those which could be destroyed through violence were neutralized before ever receiving a designation, with the obvious exception being SCP-682, despite the Foundation's best efforts. Even more exceptional is SCP-999, which while just as anomalous and nigh indestructible as the others, did not share its siblings' capacity for cruelty and slaughter. Of all the humans that were unlucky enough to become part of SCP-231, only the mother of SCP-999 was able to survive and make a full recovery from the trauma that she suffered at the hands of the cult. This unexpectedly happy outcome was apparently thanks to SCP-999's ability to heal those around it, including its human mother. SCP-682, the Hard to Destroy Reptile, and SCP-999, the Tickle Monster, are the two most notable members of the SCP-231 brood, and while the Scarlet King had more than likely hoped that his actual biological children would join forces to drown our world in misery and pain, this will most likely never come to pass. That is because SCP-682 and SCP-999 are like oil and water and the one that has been successful in rising above the other has unmistakably been SCP-999. This surprising truth became known to the Foundation after a rather eventful cross-test between the two most contrary spawn of the Scarlet King, and the findings from that experiment point towards a possible long-term solution in dealing with the interdimensional Elder Evil, as well as his children, adopted or otherwise. The cross-test was the product of resilient optimism from the research team, who, against all odds, were willing to bet that SCP-999 could survive an encounter with one of the most infamous Keter-class SCPs the Foundation had on record. Nobody could be 100% sure that 999 would come out of the test unscathed, and there was not an insubstantial amount of fear as everyone's favorite glob of goodness was wheeled into a shared containment for the experiment to be carried out. However, the mere presence of SCP-999 did soothe a great deal of the worried souls, which only instilled more confidence in the head researchers that this would lead to a success. Once SCP-999 was alone in the cell with SCP-682, the main event could begin. SCP-682 had been subjected to a wide variety of cross-tests during its time in containment, and having never met or been aware of SCP-999 prior to the test, was cautiously staring the creature down, preparing for the absolute worst. With a beaming smile on its face, SCP-999 slid forward towards the reptile, causing the Keter-class SCP to instinctively step backward in response. There was something deeply unsettling about this gooey little glob to SCP-682, but it couldn't fathom what from appearance. The overseers of the cross-test were stunned. The sight of 682 retreating from an entity was rare, to say the least and the adorable, unimposing shape of SCP-999 made the scene playing out inside the containment area especially surreal. But no matter how unlikely it seemed, SCP-999 had begun the sibling playdate with an insurmountable psychological advantage. As the tickle monster moved ever closer, SCP-682 found itself backed into a corner. With no further options, the reptile brought one of its massive claws down on top of the smiling blob. The entire mass of SCP-999 was splattered into jelly upon impact. For a moment, it seemed as though that was it. The researchers held their breath in shock, hoping that SCP-999 would pull through. And then, their wish came true. The amorphous form of SCP-999 began to reshape itself into the recognizable form that we all know and love. It proceeded to crawl up SCP-682's body towards the nape of its neck. Once there, the tickle monster began doing what it does best, cuddles, and lots of them. 682 was certainly caught off guard by this unusual occurrence, and more than that, it was falling fast under SCP-999's spell of benevolence. The lizard began to stomp its claws, overcome with sudden bouts of uproarious laughter. It began to vocalize in a way that seemed uncharacteristically enthusiastic for the Keter-class anomaly. Happy, happy, 
I feel so happy, repeated 682 as it rolled around and thrashed in the cross-testing containment chamber. The merciless tickling from SCP-999 looked like it would be torturous for the big reptile to endure if it wasn't so much fun. On the sidelines, the Foundation personnel cheered on their wonderful little friend 999 as it continued to tickle SCP-682 without stopping. Some of the staff present were even sporting custom t-shirts that read, SCP-999 literally cured my depression. The Tickle Monster did have a large fan base within its containment facility after all, and returning some of the good vibes that the anomaly had provided seemed like the right thing to do at a time like this. SCP-682's fits of laughter continued for a long while, and the more it went on, the more it seemed that SCP-682 was becoming tired. 999 seemed to sense its sibling's energy level decreasing, ceased the relentless tickling, and instead began to nuzzle 682 and purr into the lizard's ears. Slowly, the quiet and pleasant sounds of SCP-999 lulled 682 into a peaceful slumber. The hard-to-destroy reptile curled up on the floor of the containment cell, almost like a sleeping cat, and began to gently snore away. Once its older and more cantankerous sibling had fallen completely asleep, SCP-999 slithered off SCP-682's back and settled down nearby to rest its own eyes. The research team couldn't help but smile and observe for several minutes before eventually removing 999 from the cross-test containment cell. Predictably, this caused SCP-682 to revert back to its usual violent behavior, and a containment breach ensued shortly after. However, the casualties were kept to a minimum, as SCP-999 bravely helped escort several dozen Foundation personnel to safety by itself. What would we do without you, 999? We know what SCP-682 would do without SCP-999, of course. The hard-to-destroy reptile would be far less threatened. While SCP-999 had expressed continued interest in another playdate with 682, the exact opposite sentiment has been reported from its reptilian sibling, and it is simply not a lack of affection. There is an underlying fear that motivates SCP-682's desire to never interact with SCP-999 again. While some researchers speculated that SCP-682 felt an incredible sense of shame when it was observed being tickled, this is more of an armchair assumption that projects typical human psychology onto an anomalous being. We cannot forget that SCP-682 was born of the Scarlet King, and while SCP-999 possesses the inverse of its father's traits, SCP-682 might have directly inherited the template for its emotional intelligence from that very same being. While most well-adjusted humans try to avoid supposedly negative stimuli, such as embarrassment, anger, sadness, and fear, and seek out positive stimuli, i.e. happiness, pleasure, security, and trust, alien beings with twisted minds like the Scarlet King might have these priorities reversed. To SCP-682, all other living things are disgusting, and it wishes to destroy them, but when this tendency is examined within the context of both SCP-999 and what we know about the Scarlet King, it becomes clear that SCP-682 isn't an excessively prideful being. Moreover, SCP-682 doesn't believe that it is doing the world or itself a service by eliminating the aforementioned disgusting beings. We have theorized that SCP-682 and SCP-999 are equal and opposite, but if that proves to be true on the level of internal psyche, SCP-682 might compulsively attack other beings for the same reason that SCP-999 comforts them. It is a continuous expression of empathy, or more accurately, whatever one might call the impossible inverse of empathy. SCP-682 and the Scarlet King are not merely indifferent to the suffering of others. Both of them need to be in the presence of those suffering beings in order to feel any sense of meaning in their existence. After all, love is the strongest emotion, but hate is the second strongest. Imagine now, if you can, why 682 fears 999, a being that represents every unwanted sensation and emotion that it lives its immortal life hoping to avoid. In the eyes of SCP-682, SCP-999 is precisely as horrifying as the reptile is to ourselves. Want an anomaly of your own? Check out scpswag.com for high-quality SCP merch. Now go check out SCP-001 No Match for the Tickle Monster. 
And what does SCP-999 do all day, hour by hour? For more adventures with SCP-999.